following is part of a collection of interviews conducted by El Grupo Elron, a non-profit group dedicated to eradicating false concepts in all fields of knowledge through the teachings of the Ascended Masters of Light, by a medium, Jorge Raul Olguin. June 4, 1997. Messages from the Solar Logos, Master Jesus. We are ready to receive messages. Joyful to be again with you. I am Yeswa Ben Yosef. For you, I am Master Jesus. I welcome you, Master, and I'm listening to your message. I came specifically to clarify some needed points about vibrational levels. There are six positive planes of spiritual vibration, starting with level one, which is the one of incarnated beings, or the physical level, which you are in now. The follow spiritual levels two and three are planes of error. Plane four is a master's level, and plane five is where spirits of most light dwell. Plane six belongs to the angelical world. This plane, in fact, is not above plane five, but to give you an earthly example, a dolphin and an elephant coexist in the same plane, but in different habitats. In addition, there are two negative planes, vibrational level negative, one, that is a vibration where the spirit is completely isolated. Vibrational level negative, two, is where each spirit shares the pain of all the other spirits who live in that plane. That very dense vibration is also called the eighth sphere. Besides, there is a vibrational level seven, which are inhabited by divine energies and vibrational level eight, is of the Elohim or minor gods. Almost 2,000 years ago, when I was alive, the divine energy that communicated to me and with the Father was the Christ, and at that time he was the Solar Logos. There is a lot of misinformation when it's said that the Christ was the planetary Logos of Earth, because that position was held then by Elo Jehovah. The Christ was Solar Logos and in turn in charge of the entire planetary system. At that time the dimensional Logos was the divine energy Ibruxus. The Elo Jehovah, whose level of vibration was 8, transmitted part of himself to plane 4 in order to facilitate his communication with incarnated beings. That was how he could communicate telepathically with Moses. Unfortunately, human beings had no other form of spiritual communication and confused this Elo with the Father. To make things worse, Jehovah had tyrannical attitudes towards incarnated beings and had many conduct deviations, sometimes touching the limits of cruelty. Was he lower from level? No, in the spiritual planes there is nobody in charge or is or lower level of vibration to those who behaved well or badly. The entities themselves can ascend or descend, according to their behavior, because that behavior makes them to become subtler or denser. Further, in the case of an ELO, they belong to plane 8 and cannot lower from level. But when not helping humanity to rise spiritually in 2000 years, the single fact is already counterproductive for an entity such as Jehovah, or perhaps not. What happened when you disincarnated? When I disincarnated I asked the Father with all my love to allow me to descend to the 8th sphere, to the vibrational level, negative, plane 2, to share the pain of the entities that inhabited that level and alleviate their suffering. Immediately after, I went to level 4 of Masters and I was appointed as the new planetary Logos. 1000 years after disincarnating, around your 1000 AD I had the joy to ascend to level 5, and I was appointed Solar Logos. In turn, the Divine Energy, the Christ, became the new Dimensional Logos instead of Abruxas. What is the role of a Dimensional Logos? The Dimensional Logos not only guides the destiny of all the stellar system in this galaxy, but also of star systems of all the galaxies in the physical universe. And you can also communicate with other Dimensional Logos inhabiting the 22 parallel universes. The Dimensional Logos are also direct messengers of the Absolute, the highest god. Another misinformation is that some part of Orthodox Christianity, called Catholicism, says that I'm a member of the Trinity. Nothing could be further from the truth. I am a son of the Absolute, as well as all who dwell in any world. Master, why is it said that you descended to Hell when disincarnating? It is said that I descended to that, invented Hell, some refer to, because as I said before, I requested to lower down to the Eighth Sphere. This plane is the densest of all creation, where spirits who have extreme cruelty dwell. There they can feel the pain of other spirits where each one lives it like his own. It's a state of great oppression, until each entity understands that all suffer equally and learn to share pain. Know that no spirit is equal to another one. Because of free will given by the Father, each spirit may choose to serve, love, share or live for their fellow man. 
he can also choose to submit, dominate, absorb, confuse, hurt or live on other spirits. Anyone who lives on the other, who submits to another, who submerges in permanent mistakes, error, evil, can go down to the 8th sphere. But there is also a mistake to this. It was thought that the 8th sphere was a very negative dimensional energy center that cruel spirits, who came there, disintegrated themselves with the cosmic energy. This is not true, because the spirit is immortal, and does not die. And besides, the father would never allow that any lives be destroyed. Evil is transmuted, not destroyed. So, is not the 8th sphere the place of black magic? It is the transmutation for the black magician. There is no destruction or eternal fire. Simply, when I asked to go to the 8th sphere, it was because I needed to live experiences of those who suffered. I understand. What was your activity there? I calmed sorrows, closed wounds, I gave consolation, but they were so blind not from sight, but spiritually, that they did not listen. I tempted myself and I tried to provide those pearls, contradicting from what I had said to my followers, when seeing so much pain. Later I reflected and I thought that only the divine mercy of the Father might induce them to rise slowly and stop squirming in agony. It's crystal clear, Master. Another misconception is the belief that the higher the level of vibration, the lesser the suffering. It's quite the opposite. But obviously, in the light planes we don't suffer for our mistakes, but for mistakes of others, for wrongdoings of beings that are in dense vibrations, trying to manipulate other beings of their same vibration for personal gain. At level 5 of spiritual vibration, we have many tasks. We live to serve with many other entities, who feel that the goal is to share, who enjoy seeing others happy, who enjoy their happiness, but not all is joy. We also suffer the pain of those who are dominated by ego. We suffer for those who only think about dominating. We know that suffering is not forever. It was already dictated to this vessel that it will be a great communion with the Father, without losing our individuality, to be able to enjoy in Him, in the Father. I leave, and I am with you, always. So long, Master, and thanks for the messages. Does any other entity wish to give guidance? Yes, I'm John Rickenderell. I can also be referred to as Professor Olguin's inner being or as 90%. When I was incarnated long ago I was known as John, a disciple of the Master Jesus and I confirm the words of my beloved Master and Dad. When we suffer at the Light Plains, we suffer by empathy. We surround with our Ray the spirit of error, who is in crisis and try to console him. We don't always succeed, as there are spirits who rebel by arrogance and don't allow to be helped. The same happens on the physical plane. There are many people who believe to have the absolute truth and don't listen to any guidance. Others have malice and, guided by ego, make a destructive criticism against those who only seek to serve. There is still much to do, but not just spreading the word, but through work. Because the word without action is sterile, it's like the flower without scent. It's necessary that everything that is planned is carried out later. Nothing can be achieved without sacrifice, but we know that the path of good is a path with thorns. Never evade a commitment, never cease to respond to a request for help, nor ignore the given word, because honor is fundamental. Don't ever cease to get knowledge, because the more knowledge you have, the more you can transmit to others, and never hold back what you know, because knowledge that is not given rots within the stingy person. Sharing is also service. With all love I say goodbye to you.